Aloha friends, it's Robert Stoic. Welcome to the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel where we've taught millions of people to stand up paddle through our instructional videos. And today's video is going to be a stand up paddle quick start guide. I'm going to break down the simple steps to help you get started in stand up paddling, whether you're doing it for the first time or maybe you've tried it and you realize it's a little bit more challenging than you thought it would be. This will really help you get started. So first of all, the conditions are really important. You want to go to a place that has nice, calm, smooth water, like this beach. It's kind of protected from the wind and waves. It's calm water. That makes it a lot easier to balance. If you have wind and chop and waves, it's much more difficult to balance on your board. Secondly, you want to have the right equipment. So you want to make sure you have a board that's nice and floaty and stable. This board here is a stand-up surfing board. It's 9, 1 by 30 and only has 130 liters. So it's definitely not a good board to learn on for beginners. As you get better, you can use a smaller board. You're more comfortable on a smaller board. But when you get started, make it easy for yourself. Get a really wide, stable, floaty board. That will make it much easier. The next thing is safety. Many places require a personal flotation device. Here in Hawaii, the Coast Guard considers a standard paddleboard a surf craft so we don't have to wear a PFD but you do always have to wear a leash so make sure you wear a leash and that way the board is your flotation device but most places in the US and internationally you are required to wear a personal flotation device so make sure you know the local rules and wear a personal flotation device if you have to also make sure you're dressed for the occasion here in Hawaii sun protection is important I'm going to have a hat and long sleeves on and sunscreen. So protect yourself from the elements. If it's cold, make sure you wear a wetsuit that's warm enough for the water temperatures. Make sure that the wind is not blowing offshore, blowing you out to sea because that can be dangerous. Make sure there's no strong currents and so on where you're paddling. Okay, so let's get started. First off, I'm going to attach the leash to my ankle like so. This keeps the board close to me, I can't get away, so even if I lose my paddle or whatnot, I can always still paddle back on the board like it's a surfboard. So keeping your board connected to your body, super important, so always wear a leash. The paddle length is about a uh, shaka sign over my head, so it's about 6 to 12 inches over your head is a good length for cruising, paddling, all around paddling. To carry the board into the water, don't lift it straight off the ground. Always. Make sure you lift the board up on the rail first, grab the handle, bend your knees and protect your back to carry the board. So I'm going to start in about knee deep water where the fin has enough clearance underneath the board to, so it doesn't touch the bottom. And then I'm going to find the center line of the board this way and the center of volume here. The handle is usually a good place to orientate yourself and I'm going to put my knees on either side of the center handle so my weight's right over the center of the volume of the board. So I'm going to kneel on the board first and then I'm going to grab the paddle and just paddle on my knees for a little bit. I can either kneel on my toes like this or I can sit on my ankles. This is a little bit more comfortable. And then I'm just going to play around with the paddle. If I paddle backwards, that'll turn the board around. If I paddle on one side, that'll also turn the board. So to go straight, I have to switch my paddle back and forth. I'm not holding the paddle all the way at the top, I'm just holding it a little bit shorter right now on my knees. So just getting the feel for paddling on my knees and switching the paddle from one hand to the other when I'm switching sides. So a common mistake that beginners make is they try to paddle without switching their hands. So don't do this, like switching sides without switching the hands, this is really awkward. So always make sure you switch the paddle from one side to the other side from and switch your hand. So the bottom hand is always the outside hand when you're paddling. So once you're comfortable paddling on your knees, maybe try to do a 360. So if you get the paddle way out to the side like this, you can also put the paddle behind you and make a backward sweeping stroke. This is called a sweep stroke. You get it way out to the side. See how easily that turns my board? can easily do a 360 turn just so you understand how to turn the board if you have to. 
Okay, so if you're comfortable on your knees and you feel ready to stand up, just take a couple of strokes, get the board moving a little bit, that'll make it more stable. Then you want to put the paddle across the front of the board with your hands on top of the paddle. And then put your feet right where your knees were. Stand up and look forward and start paddling. Put the paddle in the water, start paddling. That'll make you feel more stable. What you want to avoid doing is get stuck in this position where you're looking down at the board or looking um, at the water. This is a really hard position to find your balance and so instead you want to get straightened up, look forward and get your paddle in the water. The paddle will add some stability. It's kind of like a walking stick in the water. So once you start paddling, look forward, find your balance, let your legs do the balancing, don't overthink it. And then you'll be able to find your balance pretty quickly. If you're struggling balancing, you can always get back down on your knees. So it's easier to keep your balance when you're kneeling. Make sure you have a good paddle grip width. So um, a good way to find the right width is to put your hand about halfway between the handle and the blade, or you can put your paddle on top of your head and make right angles with both elbows. This is called the paddler's box. That gives you a good indication of where to put your lower hand. Many beginners hold the paddle too high on the shaft. So a wide grip and then switching your hands every time you switch sides. Standing up, same thing, if you do a backward sweeping stroke, it'll help turn you around faster and stop at the same time. If you want to keep turning, you can switch sides and paddle forward on one side and then backwards on the opposite side. That'll make you turn all the way around. Now, if you want to go straight, and make sure you keep that paddle straight up and down. So out to the side is a steering stroke. A forward stroke is holding your paddle straight up and down. So if you look, make a little window with your arms and your paddle and look through that window. So keeping the paddle upright and pulling it straight back. A common beginner mistake is to only use your arms when you're paddling. Like, so a lot of beginners just use their top hand and bottom arms to paddle. So don't just only use your arms to paddle like this. You want to use your whole body and you can actually keep your arms fairly straight and use more of a twisting motion that uses the bigger muscles in your body, your back muscles, your torso. So it's using a twisting motion and also leaning into the paddle a little bit, pushing down with the top hand, that'll um, give you a lot more power. Common mistake is to hold the paddle backwards. A lot of beginners hold the paddle like this, which is the wrong way. So if you angle it towards you, what you find is you push the water up back here and this doesn't drive you forward. It just kind of actually um, compresses you down towards the water. By holding your paddle with the blade angled forward, this is the correct way, you'll get more direct power, pushing the water straight back and driving yourself forward. So holding the paddle correctly is important and usually the handle is orientated the right way. So you should know if the handle feels kind of weird in your palm, you're probably not holding the paddle correctly. So this is the correct way to hold your paddle. Another common mistake is to not be standing in the, in the right spot on the board. So right now I'm balancing out the board, a nice trim we call it. And the board's flat in the water, and has a maximum amount of glide. If you're too far forward on the board, um, you're just kind of pushing water in the front, the tail sticking out. It's not as stable. The board won't glide as well and it'll turn, turn and twist easily. It'll have more yaw in the water. Stand it too far back and the board will not be as stable. It won't glide as well. It'll slow you down and also you, it'll yaw more so it'll be harder to go in a straight line. So if you're standing too far forward or too far back, um, just try to get back to the center of the board where the board's kind of level in, in the water. The flat part of the board is um, parallel to the water surface. If you do fall in, try to avoid falling on the board. A lot of um, beginners tend to make the mistake and try to kind of catch their fall by falling onto their knees or possibly hitting their ribs on the rails or falling on their butt. 
or on their paddle. So don't do that. If you fall in, if you realize you're losing your balance and you're falling in, just fall into the water. Don't jump in feet first. If it's shallow, you hit the bottom really hard. So better to fall flat, kind of like a starfish and uh, let the water absorb your fall. And then to get back on, the easiest way is to kind of hold the handle in the middle, get back to the board, and then make sure you kick your feet behind you. It's kind of like a swimming position, like where you get the body flat up to the surface of the water and then you slide your chest onto the board. So if you're kicking your feet down or you're trying to push off the bottom, if there's no bottom, you're gonna, uh, you're not gonna be able to pull yourself up out of the water because your legs are kind of holding you down. So don't kick down, but rather kick behind you like you're swimming and it'll be easy to slide back on your board and then you can get back into that kneeling position and start all over again. If you're paddling out for the first time, make sure you're safe, stay close to shore, don't get too far out. Ideally, go with friends and have someone that can watch you. Make sure you take as many safety precautions as you can and uh, go out in safe conditions with the right equipment and make sure to just have fun and enjoy. So as you're coming back in, you're gonna do kind of the reverse of getting out. So back down to the knees. I'm gonna put the paddle down, get back on my knees, and then I can paddle on my knees close to shore. You'd never wanna jump off. You can see here there's like rocks in the water. So definitely don't wanna just jump off the board and hit the bottom hard. What I'm gonna do is just gently put one foot down on the bottom and set the other foot down. And then lifting up the board, once again, make sure you put, lift up the rail first to get the board off the water so it doesn't have suction on the water surface. And then lift it up and then you can carry the board out of the water. Okay, so that's it. This is the quick start guide for stand-up paddling. If you would like to get the full manual, I'm currently working on a book titled Stand-Up Paddle Boarding for Dummies. It's going to be available in early 2025 and you should check it out. It's a great way to get into stand-up paddling and advance in the sport. My goal is to help as many people as possible get on the water, have fun, get healthy both physically and mentally. So please support the book project. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you on the water. Aloha.